but only a part. And maybe the most mature version, uh, though still a partial one of the ecosystem, uh, would be in the US, where in the case of Olin College, Needham, Massachusetts, uh, we see talent and learning beginning to knit together with business innovation and growth. So um, Olin University, um, experiential learning, design-centered, student-centered, they co-design co the curriculum, and constant innovation, that curriculum is rethought every 18 months. Strong emphasis on entrepreneurialism and a co-laboratory which brings business right into what Olin does. Here are some of the partner corporations that work with Olin. Um, and Boeing, for example, recently said to Olin, there's a problem in one of the engines on the plane. We know it's about the pump deep in the engine. Take that pump out and take it back to Olin. And they did, and six months later, they brought it back with hugely improved performance. So that's a real-world problem being fixed by students as part of the course. So something about the core processes at work in this ecosystem. Firstly, education running along the top. Here's an opportunity to co-develop radical new curricula based on problem-based problem learning and real problems. But it's also an opportunity to figure out new integrated learning pathways, allowing students to take any path they want, formal, informal, uh, part-time, full-time, um, through the school, through the university, really from year 12 to the first job and beyond. Those are the new education processes. But there's a real opportunity to put this process right at the heart of a regional growth agenda. Um, in the UK, we have uh, local um, economic partnerships, or LEPs, which are entrusted with the strategic economic development of the city, the county, the region. Typically, those LEPs are struggling. They're quite good at creating infrastructure, figuring out the next road to build. They're much less good at building the human capabilities to drive the growth of that region. So there's a chance here to build a learning and innovation ecosystem, which is a mutually supportive community of education, business, public and civic stakeholder goods uh, and stakeholder groups with shared interests in freeing the value locked into social or business problems, aligned around talent development and collaborative innovation, um, that puts education and building human capital right at the heart of regional growth. But who gets to orchestrate this? In my view, there is nobody better place to orchestrate it, to make all this complex stuff happen, than the university because the university is right in the middle of it, working closely with the school system, working closely with partner businesses. So this is the university that convenes, that designs, that plans, that coordinates, that brokers. And that means new capabilities within the university, but the prize is fantastic to put the university right at the center as the most influential institution, potentially, of the 21st century. Um, if problem-based learning is in the middle of this, who's doing it well? I've recently looked at universities around the world, and I'm sure this isn't an exhaustive list, but I see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven uh, universities which are doing an extraordinary job. Um, all of them are committed to experiential learning, collaborative learning, multidisciplinary learning. But let me just pick out three, because I think they're doing something extra. The first will be Olborg. University in Denmark. Uh, perhaps the most systematic applicant of problem-based learning in the world. Um, wasn't founded yesterday. Sometimes it's easier to do these things in a university founded yesterday. It's founded in 1974. Um, it uh, applies the problem-based learning model across the university into all of its disciplines. And in 2014, it created with UNESCO the Global Center for Problem-Based Learning in Engineering Sciences and Sustainability. Engineering Sciences and Sustainability probably being the core of this approach, but by no means exclusively. 
Uh, second, I would point to a nation example, uh, the Singapore University of Technology and Design, much more recent, 2012, in partnership with MIT. Um, Problem-based learning with an emphasis on design and a major investment, to go back to an earlier presentation, in learning technologies. The fabrication lab, the game lab, and learning catalytics, steering the learning of each student with instant date, data and feedback on their performance. And then finally, I think I'd pick out Purdue in the States on the far left-hand side, which has created an EPICS program, that's what it calls it, for its engineering students, but that's now drawing in high school students as well. And they work on real-world problems, not of big companies, which can afford for these young people to fail, but for small not-for-profits, for whom these problems are absolutely mission critical. Um, and there have been cases of these young people um, being fired by these small not-for-profits because it matters that much. And that has been very motivating for the students. Lastly, um, I just want to apply the concept across two more horizons. We've talked about the regional horizon and the opportunity to make this model fly at state or city level. But it can work at a national level. You can well imagine how a university can draw in students from schools right across the country and work with uh, national companies, um, smart specialization, whatever the sector may be, in order to create excellence um, amongst young people coming through and solve business problems at the same time. And finally, there must be a global dimension. Um, there's no reason why KAIST uh, shouldn't be drawing exceptional students from some of the best school systems in the world, Boston, London, uh, wherever it may be, Finland, um, and then working with technology-based major companies in order to uh, offer an education to those kids and make sure that they, they make an exceptional contribution to the development of those companies. So, just to end in summary, um, it looks like the best companies are addressing complex problems of global dimensions. And therefore, they're looking for new and demanding capabilities in graduate employees. Even the best universities in the world are struggling to respond to that agenda. That's what the companies are saying, which points, in my view, to a new model for developing talent, an ecosystem that locks together the school system, the university, and the company, a commitment to problem-based learning with spin-off benefits to companies, it works locally, but it could work nationally, and it could work globally. And the fascinating thing is that the university is the best-placed institution to orchestrate the ecosystem. Thank you very much. Ah, 지금부터 그러면 그 question and answer 시간을 갖겠습니다. 여기 나와 있는 거 한번 좀 모바일 통해서 두 가지 지금 글이 올라와 있는데 그걸 잠깐 한번 짚어보고 갈게요. 첫 번째는 마지막에 올라온 건데요. 그 저희가 사실 그 industry perspective라고 얘기를 했는데 이때 그 industry를 도대체 뭘로 정의해야 되느냐라고 이렇게 또 질문을 주셨습니다. 그게 나와 있는 것처럼 어떤 이 large size corporate world를 말하는 건지 아니면은 이 조그마한 이런 industry도 포함되는 말인지 되게 혹시 계십니까? 여기 질문해 주신 분이요? 네, 네, 네. 좋은 질문 해주셨는데, 아, 혹시 여기에 대해서 어, 어떤 분 답변 주실 분 계신지요? 저희 스피커 중에서요. 오케이. Okay. Uh, I... Okay, let me make a, a short comment, okay? Very important question, okay? So, but it's very critical because the industry is very diverse, okay? It is very hard to define the industry and their requirements clearly, okay? The large company and small companies may have a different requirements, okay? So, it is the reason why the university uh, failed to meet the requirements, so diverse. However, I think uh, the university, each university may set their target, okay, uh, for some uh, specialty, some areas, or some uh, size, more medium or large companies. So depending on the university's strategy and their target setting, uh, they may focus on specific 
uh, industry or specific size of the companies and so on. I think usually uh, medium and small companies need more, uh, more uh, low-level skilled, skilled, okay, uh, and more hands-on uh, skills and so on. However, as you observed, large global companies usually requires more uh, global thinking and creativity and more problem solving and then so on. Okay, more comp they should be able to uh, more complex problem and it's a little different. 네, 아, 모두의 시작하면서 어, 현재 이 취업률 이런 것들 우리 그 젊은 세대들이 가지고 있는 고민들 아, 저희들이 함께 하지 않을 수 없다라고 이렇게 얘기를 하면서 시작을 했습니다만서도 자, 그렇게 한다라고 봤을 때이 산업계 관점을 포용하기 위해서 어떻게 해야 되느냐라고 했었을 때 so I think I found that uh, here is one idea so in addition to chip information of, is there anyone who, 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 who is asking these questions? Okay, so can you read this first? So, yeah. Okay, so in addition to chief information officers, should members of the industry also sit on the strategic boards of university to shape tertiary curricula? Because there's been a lot of talk in the past, in the, uh, the few presentations about what industry wants, what industry needs, and uh, graduate employability. So, what can be a possible solution? And are universities doing this, or are they implementing other such solutions? Yeah, um, so, Ken? Yeah, it's very difficult to change the university and the professors. I think it's almost impossible, okay? So even the university board members cannot make lead such kind of changes, okay? So, uh, in fact, Nowadays, we have some the board members from the industry, okay? But uh, they only ask for hiring a uh, new the president, okay? But they do not touch details of the education in the university. So, uh, but I would like to suggest a very simple uh, the message. One, okay, first. If the industry is not happy with uh, uh, the university education, for example, Google or Samsung, they are not happy with uh, MIT graduate or Harvard graduate, then please stop hiring, okay, from people from uh, the MIT and Harvard. Then it will be a shocking news, okay? Otherwise, they will not change, okay? The second one, okay, uh, university and uh, the, the University is sensitive to the money, okay? So then industry should invest some money for transforming the university. For example, they give some money to develop some new courses for their needs, okay? And so on. They may attract the university changes, okay? By using some proper money, even small. It will be effective. Otherwise, the universe never changes. I, I think. I'm yeah. sorry. <laughs> okay. Do you have other comment? Um, uh, other? Okay. I, Can you add? I'd like to add a little bit on responding to that question mm. because, based on uh, personal experience, so prior to joining Microsoft, I was working in a university and I happen to be one of the pioneers in setting up the university. So I know exactly how challenging it was for us to get the best resources, be it for the back end of the university as well as the lecturers, uh, the management, and so on, uh, even to getting the students. Now, when it comes to talking about relations between universities and industries, depending on what type of industry we're talking about. I happen to be working in IT industry now, but previously I was working in a school of education where we produce teachers. One of the things that we did that made us different from other universities or teacher colleges was that we provide um, 
sort of like on the job training as well. So during their four years of bachelor's degree, every semester is allotted like two weeks up to four weeks of teaching practice in a school, or we, uh, we called it back then school experience program. So they experience what is it like to be in their industry because it was um, education. They, ha they started by observing teachers, becoming teacher's assistant, and they were interns to those teachers. So that gave them the, the real knowledge, the real experience, and the insights of a teacher. That was one of the, the model uh, we did as a school of education. Now, in, in terms of IT industry, this is a bit more complicated and it's um, more um, diverse in the sense uh, if we talk about Microsoft, uh, like it or not, Microsoft did set up the standards for so many things. For example, when we talk about presentation, people still think PowerPoint immediately. When we talk about spreadsheet, people st still think about Excel. I saw an ad for Google once where one of the criteria was having expertise in Excel. So it's still undeniable that some companies did set up strong standards, just like Cisco back then for uh, networking. So those companies did change the world and they need to talk to industry, uh, sorry, they need to talk to the world of academia. <clears throat> like it or not, we did uh, change the world and one way or another, we have to talk with the academia. Why? Because when we have to produce new talents with on-the-job training all the time, it's not gonna happen. We only have 24 hours a day, and in companies like Microsoft, Cisco, Intel, we are expected to work, well, the working hours is eight hours a day, supposedly, but usually we work like 15 to 18 hours a day, and there's no time to really do on-the-job training. That's why we need the university to produce the best graduates. Um, one of the example that Microsoft has is that, okay, if we can't be the board in every school, I don't think it's, it's possible, and it might be a compliance issue. Some would say it's, it's more of um, monopoly. Microsoft is being famous for getting sued a lot of time for monopoly. But what we did uh, in some universities now is that we have yes. a set of curriculum that mm -hmm. is being used as standards in the industry that is ready for any universities or schools, even high schools can yes. use it if they want to. Mm -hmm. So it's equipped with the latest technology updates that students and teachers and professors can do on their own. Yeah. So that helps to um, minimize the gap. I think the sim uh, similar thing happens with Cisco as well. Uh, we have Cisco had Cis Cis, uh, Cisco uh, yeah. Certified Networking Academy. So it's something similar that we in the IT industry have been uh, doing for the last uh, years or a uh, few years or so. Okay, so because of time limitation, so maybe I think we can uh, hear just uh, 30 seconds uh, from Jay. Yeah. Yeah, just to share our uh, Intel perspectives as well. I think your point is really important. And uh, from uh, uh, Intel, you know, like a senior management, like a crack better who are really committed in education, I, I understand that he's been actually uh, sitting in the, you know, board member of the Stanford University. And at this point as well, that are, you know, like a fellow technical uh, leaders who are actually supporting like Purdue and many, you know, renowned universities together. And um, even though we are not directly sitting in the university, you know, board, I think there are many, you know, other ways we can really support together and helping each other by, you know, helping like researches and curriculums and the programs. For example, like in Vietnam, there are hip programs that you know, Barack, and the President Barack Obama actually endorsed and supported. Is it really helping the university students get capacity for the English? You know, together working with the, together in Intel. So I believe that there are many more ways that you know the corporations as well as industry can work together to really you know bring the innovations and you know. So I, I think there is really you know, not, no limit in the, in such collaborations. It's always we are innovative and creative. Yes. 네. 아, 다시 한번 그 시간 제약상 아, 이렇게 해서 아, 이번 세션을 마쳐야 될것 같은데요. 아, 오늘 세션의 주제 아까 말한 것처럼요. 정말 대학이 이 마켓에 아, 리스판딩 하고 있느냐라는 겁니다. 예, 산업체의 관점에서요. 어, 이미 하고 있다고 보여집니다. 이미 하고 있습니다. 특히 이, 그 
어, 테크니컬 트레이닝 인스티튜션이라든지 아니면 컬리지 레벨에서는 많이들 하고 있습니다. 그렇지만 아까 어, 이태혁 교수님 말하신 것처럼 그렇지 않은 대학도 많이 있습니다. 특히 이탑 레벨 유니버시티 같은 경우는 그렇지 않은 경우가 많은데요. 이제 저희의 앞으로의 과제는 그런 것 같습니다. 이 대학에서 보다 좀 적극적으로 이 산업체에서 요구하는 관점이 무엇인지를 우선은 좀 들어야 되는 게 먼저일 것 같고요. 또한 가지입니다. 이 기업에서도요. 이 대학 에서 좀 적극적으로 인더스트리 관점을 반영하도록 하기 위해서는 어떻게 해야 할 것인가에 대한 고민도 함께 있어야 될것 같습니다. 그리고 그 과정에서 저희가 또 끝에서 놓쳤던 부분 중에 하나인데 바로 이 테크놀로지가 커다란 역할을 할 것이다 라고 생각됩니다. 오늘 마지막 세션까지 참석해 주신 네분 연사분들 그리고 끝에서 또 좋은 질문을 해 주신 또 플로어에 계신 게스트분들 감사드립니다. 이곳으로 세션4를 마치도록 하겠습니다. 고맙습니다. 네.